Okay, at the risk of completely alienating uh, the very small audience that I have for these videos, um, I decided to do a build phasing video showing what we're doing from the front. So we've already shown what we're doing from the side, now we're showing what we do from the front. And I think this is important to kind of show what the space is going to be like inside the van after the build is complete. And what we're going for is something that tries to maintain as open and spacious a feel in the van as we can possibly get and still have a reasonable amount of storage, a reasonable amount of places to sit, and and really just a comfortable place to hang out in when you're inside the van. So um, that's what we're shooting for. And again, we we spent a lot of time looking at the Westie as a sort of um, uh, guide for doing this design. And in a lot of ways, this is an homage to the Westie in terms of how we how we've gone about doing this. But um, and we just we just love the Westie. We just that don't like the fact that it's, you know, it's a 30 to 40 year old vehicle um, that you're dealing with when you buy one. So um, it's also a little bit, a little bit cramped inside compared to what we're planning on doing with the transit. So again, this is the, um, this is the Iger 3 camper, which is based on the Ford Transit 148 inch wheelbase, mid roof, all wheel drive. And right now we are thinking we're probably leaning towards the transit trail as sort of the, uh, the, the van that we're probably gonna be building this on. But the jury's still out on that. We haven't made a final decision. So, and we certainly don't own the van at this point in time. But anyway, that's where we're, that's where we're looking. And of course we're doing ample due diligence on that. So, um, so here's the build. We're, again, we're starting with the floor. And again, the floor is pretty probably, I think, going to be the AVC uh, flooring system, which is a three panel 6.6R um, rated insulated flooring system, which is CNC cut. Um, it comes ready to be dr just dropped into the van, glued in place, and you can just put your finished flooring on it and move on. So um, much easier than trying to you know, build a template out of cardboard and and then assemble it. And it, it just, you know, that's there's just so many man hours involved in doing that. And this is a system that's already done. And they've basically done all the heavy lifting for you. I think it's I think it's a fantastic idea. The only thing we're a little bit concerned about is how to attach the furniture to that floor. Um, normally if we had a plywood floor it would be certainly very easy, but with but with this particular uh, uh, panel system. It's, it's basically a sandwich of a, a sort of processed wood top with an insulated layer kind of glued to it. And, um, it's the wood top that I'm concerned about because it's not Baltic birch. It's, you know, it's probably glued sawdust. Um, so it's, it's manufactured wood. So, um, anyway, so we got a lot of thinking to do there, but um, but anyway, you know, that's part of the fun is doing the, doing the research and doing the due diligence on this to figure out what, uh, what works and what doesn't. So anyway, that's the floor. The f and again, the next thing we're going to do after we get the floor in, and of course the finished floor, which is going to be some form of vinyl, either sheet or plank, um, is putting some key pieces of furniture into the van that we can kind of cover our immediate needs for, um, just some basic overnight, uh, travel with it. Um, a key part of that is uh, this ottoman, which is over here on the, which will be the passenger side of the van. And again, remember, we're looking towards the rear of the van in this, in these drawings. Um, that ottoman will serve two purposes. One is it's a place to, to, you know, get your feet up and get comfortable and you can use it either with the bench that's behind it, or you can use it with the swiveled seats in the front. So, you know, it's, It'll be a really comfortable thing to just kind of make make life in the van a little bit more comfortable when you're just hanging out. Um, the other thing it does is it it stores a porta potty. So that porta potty is accessed by just taking this board cushion that's on the top of the ottoman, lifting it off, putting it aside, and then just using the porta potty. When you're done, put the board cushion on, and the the 
part about it goes away. It's pretty neat. Um, um, it is not going to be super light depending on which porta potty we go with and how much water is in it and et cetera, et cetera, because you know, altogether this thing might weigh between maybe 40 pounds. So not super light, but that's kind of good because we don't want the porta potty flying around the van. Um, and we're going to have to figure out some ways to make sure that the feet of this, of this little cabinet have some, uh, grip on the vinyl floor so that it's, it it's doesn't it's easy enough to move around but not it won't slide around on its own so that's that's another thing we're going to be doing some due diligence on to figure out exactly how to get that done um over here on the driver's side is a, a very short little cabinet we're calling it the fridge riser and the fridge riser um also serves two purposes one it raises the fridge to a height where it's a little easier to get into so we're using the ice co 60 liter fridge uh it's the vl60 pro s i believe and that has a lid that opens um kind of this way if you follow the cursor and kind of rotates up towards the uh, side of the van that makes it easy to get into that that fridge and the fridge is portable so it can be removed from the van put outside on the campsite if you need a place to sit um, we really like the idea of portable fridge. It's just, it just makes it easy. If something goes wrong with the fridge, it's easy to replace. You don't have to like pull something out of the cabinet and it just, I, I just, I just think it's a great solution. And if we decide to go with a different fridge at some point in the future, it's, it's, that's, that's an easy thing to do. Um, underneath the, uh, the fridge in the, in the riser portion, will be a cubby for shoes and that will be they'll have a little a little light and we're thinking trying to do a light that has a red uh option or component to it so we can so as part of the switching you could switch from white light to red light so red light for for nighttime um just to provide a little uh night light in the in the, the inside the van i think would be really nice and then on the back side of that, you can't see it in the drawing, but on the back side of that will be the Wabasto air top heater. And that's going to be drawing air from the wall side and shooting it out into the uh, into the space of the of the van um, down low where where heat should be coming in. Because as we all know, heat rises. So um, so oh, and then the back almost forgot is something we're calling a bench bed it's a rock and roll uh so called rock and roll bench bed um it's going to be designed to be very comfortable set on we're going to be using a four inch dacron wrapped foam um not sure yet what the upholstery material is but it will be but i'm thinking some sunbrella fabric which i know wears like crazy it's really an outdoor fabric and i think it's perfect for anything that you just really want to wear for a long time and not have to worry about um, um underneath the seating part of that when it's in bench mode will be a place to store things and could be you know just a place where you put your your duffel bags or backpacks or whatever so a lot of room under there to store those things and get them out of the way so you're not tripping over them and um and then it can be opened just by kind of lifting up the front edge and pulling it out and i think in this in this particular design it's about 83 inches long when it's all stretched out and horizontal so that's a lot of room to sleep um more than enough room for a person and a dog and it might be a little tight for two people on that on that bed because it's it's a little bit less than a full size um but certainly a lot larger than a twin. Um, these little things protruding from the sides are of the of the bench bed are slide bolts, and those are um, in those are there. They're actually attached to the back of the of the of the seat back, and those are designed to engage either with the wall of the van or with the furniture. And I haven't shown that yet, but I'll get to it. Um, to make sure that the back of the bench doesn't go any further back than the preferred seating position. So it's not really an adjustable seating position in terms of the back or the or the seat, 
but um, but we're going to design it so it's got a, a, a nice angle back and then the seat actually has a slight angle to it too. It's going to be a really comfortable bench. Um, anyway, so that's that. Let's move on to the next. So um, in the next phase, um, in the previous video, I, I did a lot of talk about the power slide drawer, which we're going to be adding to the back of the bench bed. And I'm not going to go into it here primarily because you can't see it because it's in the back. But um, a key part of this phase is going to be adding the galley, um, which has a control panel, which you can kind of see here, um, which is going to kind of face front and be in a position that's going to be very easy to get to while sitting on the bench. And for me, I want really wanted sort of a control center that I could get to everything that was important in terms of controlling all the all the sort of the key systems in the van. Um, right from that and things on that control panel are going to be like uh, a DC charging source selector switch uh, we're going with blue C switch for that um, the Xantrex uh, inverter charger control the Wobasto heater control um, a duplex AC outlet a 12 volt USB outlet and uh, six switches which are going to control key things like the complete uh, the, that's where you're going to be able to turn on the, the electrical system um, light control things like that are going to be oh and, uh, water heater control will be not sorry what not the water heater <laughs> the water pump control <laughs> will be part of that too so um, that's a whole long story to describe exactly what's going on that control button but take you know it's 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 custom it's going to have four screws that are going to be into threaded inserts in the plywood behind and um, it's going to be very easy to remove in case you need to get at the wiring behind that um okay next thing we're doing is the pivot table and i'm showing the pivot table in this drawing and it's sort of what i'm calling stored position which is immediately above the refrigerator and we got this idea from the Westie because in the Westie you've got a pivot table that has a store position that's honestly a little bit awkward to kind of get out of its stored position because it's kind of right next to the bench and it's just a little bit awkward to get to. This one's going to be super easy and the the rotation of that pipe which supports the table is going to be controlled by a little thumb set screw at the bottom here at the base and there's actually going to be two bases. There's one that's closer to, kind of right on the corner of the galley, closer to the bench. It's really meant to be used when you're sitting at the bench. And then there's another one that's going to be on the front of the fridge riser that is going to allow that bench to be out of the way when you're sleeping and also be able to be easily accessed or access that table when you're sitting in one of the front seats that's swiveled towards the rear or in the rear facing position. So um, a lot of flexibility there. Um, plus, that tabletop in its store position is essentially a countertop extension for the galley. So if you're cooking inside, um, one of the things we envision um, is putting an induction cooktop on top of this table, plugging it into that AC outlet that's in the front here in the control panel, and then you've got a really great place to cook. You're not burning anything and you we're going to be putting a window in this wall over here on the driver's side with some ventilation there so that will ventilate that plus we've got a pop top that's coming out and showing you yet but we've got a pop top that's going to be part, that's part of the design that also is going to allow some additional ventilation so it should be a very nice place to cook um and yeah so um anyway so that's that part of it um in the last video, I talked a lot about the importance of the pop top because the pop top that we're getting is from Field Van. It's motorized. It's a fantastic product. We're actually building our own bed for for this, um, and the bed we're going to build is going to use a a honeycomb panel uh, for the for, and, and at least one panel, maybe two. Um, that's going to form the sort of foundation of the of the bed, and then a probably like a six inch uh, laminated foam mattress 
on top of that. So we, we, we really, <laughs> really particular about our mattresses and we really want a good one. So that's, so we're building that ourselves. And, um, but the rest of it's gonna be built by Field Van. And as part of that, they are building uh, what they call a rail. And it's basically a flat surround around the pop top opening. And the rail is gonna be kind of interesting because it is going to allow us to mount certain things to the underside of that rail. Um, putting lights in it is going to be rather difficult because there's a lot of metal in there, um, which is part of the sort of the structural uh, reinforcement that they, that's required to, in order to make that pop top work. But um, but it does allow for a great a great way to, to kind of uh, mount certain things to the to the underside of that, and we'll we'll show that in a minute. Um, but anyway, um, the other thing about that is that once that's in and done then we can put in our upholstered wall panels. So we really can't do that until we get that, that top done. Um, but in order to do those wall panels, we're going to have to remove some of the furniture, if not all of it, from the space inside the van. And we are designing all of these furniture modules to allow for them to be easily removed. And we are on purpose going to be delaying a lot of the final electrical work um, because pulling out the electrical wiring after putting it all in is going to be, that's, that's just a waste. So we're going to put off a lot of the electrical work um, until that's done. Um, some of the plumbing work we probably will do because as part of the galley, we're going to be putting a 19 gallon water tank in and of course a water pump and maybe even an accumulator tank if we can fit it. Um, and we're going to just hold off on anything beyond that. So until, until we, we get these wall panels done, but once the wall panels are done and all the wiring that goes into the wall panels, like it's going up to the, to the ceiling and there is going to be some, um, then we can move on to the next phase. And that next phase is putting in. Um, a full height cabinet, which I'm showing here. In that full height cabinet, we'll have a lot of storage, um, but not only storage, but also um, uh, the capability of putting a lot of things that we want hidden underneath it that are kind of that are things that we're not going to access on a regular basis. Things like um, a subwoofer that's going to be part of the audio system, the air compressor. Um, we're probably going with the ARB twin for that. Um, we'll actually be able to, once this is in, we'll actually be able to do the electrical system. We'll, have, we'll, we'll finish the plumbing, which will include a hot water heater in the back. We'll be able to put in the outdoor shower in the back. So a lot of sort of the key things that we've been holding off on in terms of finishing all the systems in the van won't happen until this, this big cabinet is in there. So, um, but you know, we can't put that in until we've got the wall panels done. So, um, so that's that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a uh, uh, overhead cabinet just above the galley, and that's gonna provide additional storage. And we're planning on putting some lighting inside that cabinet and probably some lighting underneath it just to, just to make kind of sort of working at the galley a little bit easier and nicer at night. Um, then after that's done, then we'll probably tackle the audio system and we're finishing up because we've already got the sub, we've already sort of placed the subwoofer underneath this full height cabinet, but we're going to be at the, um, at the ceiling. Remember I said we had that, those flat areas, nice flat mounting areas around the pop top opening. Um, we're going to be mounting these, uh, Rockville pods and these are five and a quarter inch pods that <laughs> are really meant to be used on a wake wakeboarding boat but we think they're going to look cool and they swivel which gives us a lot of control over where we get this where we want the sound and it's going to i think give us some really good sound from the back of the van um i've seen situations where speakers are way in the back doors and First of all, that's not a big, that's not a great space to mount car speakers. And it's, 
it's a, a, a pretty far away and really the only place to mount them is kind of low if because we, we're going to have windows in the in the in the back doors and it's just it's not going to really lend itself well to to mounting speakers so we're gonna we're gonna use this it's just gonna put the sound a little bit closer to the front seats because really what we want is we want great sound while we're driving the van and so that's kind of how we're we're optimizing that but we're also going to have a five channel speaker that or five channel amplifier that we're going to mount underneath the passenger door i'm sorry passenger seat and then um uh component speakers that we are going to install in the front so um I think between the subwoofer, these speaker pods, the uh, five channel amp, and then the component speakers, we're gonna have a really good sound system in the van. So I'm really excited about that. Um, the last thing I wanted to show, and I didn't show this in the previous video, is that when we were thinking about this design, um, I'm a cyclist and I really was kind of thinking about, is there is there a way that I can put my bicycle um, inside the van and have it stored in such a way that it's out of the way but easily accept uh, accessible um i just didn't feel comfortable having it on the outside of the van in a rack or something like that i just really wanted something inside the van but i also didn't want to have to uh change the furniture arrangement in order to accommodate that so um what we came up with was, and fortunately the, uh, the transit midroof is tall enough to allow a bicycle. Um, now I have a, I, 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 I have a drop, I have a road bike. It's, you know, it's got the standard drop handlebars, but, um, um, sorry about that. Of course the phone rings. I should put this thing on mute. Um, um, but there's just enough room to fit it in the back. And, uh, and this would be just behind the, uh, the drawer in the, in the back of the bench bed. And, um, so, uh, when we're traveling around the bike, it's, it, and we just put a fork mount mounted up to the, to the full height cabinet. And that's where the bike goes. And it can even be in there while I'm sleeping in the bench bed. Um, so that's, I think it's I think it's going to be a really nice solution. So anyway, so that is that is our build phasing for um, the Iger Three Camper. Uh, looking at the interior space from the front. Uh, hope you enjoyed this, and we'll talk to you soon.